Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this time out, we are going to take a listen and a look at a new piece of hardware that I got here in the studio. Um, the Wes Audio NG bus compressor. You can see the plug-in up here on the screen. We're going to take a look at the hardware, the plug-in. I'm going to give you some of the key features, and we're going to listen to it, how it sounds on a few different sources. So before we get started, full disclosure, uh, this uh, I'm working with uh, Sweetwater uh, here, my good friends at Sweetwater, to bring you this video. If you want to learn more about the NG bus compressor by Wes Audio, the links will be in the description box below. And again, full disclosure, that is an affiliate link. So if you purchase the NG bus compressor or anything else at Sweetwater com using those affiliate links i do get a small commission but you don't pay any more for the product and i want to first say to all of my followers that have used my affiliate links at sweetwater over the last year i really really do appreciate it it helps me out tremendously you can't even begin to thank you and it allows me to continue to bring these kinds of videos to you so if you enjoy this content and you're in the market for new studio gear use the links in the description box below so let's head on in here into studio one and let's check out the Wes Audio NG bus compressor. So as you can see, probably by now, there's an image on the screen of the actual unit. I got a camera on it for you. And then we have the plug in here. Now, what is so special about Wes Audio? If you've been watching my channel for the last few weeks, you know that I have brought in a whole bunch of Wes Audio gear into my studio to continue to build out my hybrid setup. And the one thing I love about the Wes Audio stuff that's a game changer for me is the fact that it's a completely analog audio signal path with the hardware, but it's all digitally controlled by the plugin, like what we see on the screen here. And what does that mean? That means that this is fully 100% recallable, just like any other plugin. So again, what does that mean? Well, when you have a bunch of hardware in your system and you're using a hybrid type of a setup, one of the main sticking points to that, the more hardware you have, and when you're doing mixes for clients, what ends up happening is you have to take lots of copious notes or take photographs of the actual settings on the hardware because then when, if you have to bring up that session again, you have to go back and manually recall all of the settings, which can be a real pain if you have a lot of hardware. The great thing about Wes Audio is that you don't have to do that anymore because regardless of where the settings are from one session to the next, because it's all controlled with the plugin, you never have to do that again. And I love that. And that's a game changer for me. And that's why I brought in a bunch of the Wes Audio stuff. And we're going to be looking at their stuff over the next several weeks. And this is the first video, the NG bus compressor. So let me give you some of the features of this compressor. Then we're going to walk through the controls and then I'm going to, um, we're going to listen to it on some sources uh, below. And I'll stick around to the end of the video as well, because I have a couple of free gifts I want to give you. So make sure you stick around and watch. So let's talk about the West Audio NG bus compressor. For, so the first feature is, as I said, it's a hundred percent analog. So this is not a digital unit. This is not some kind of fancy voodoo. This is, as you can see on the screen, an actual three space analog unit. Okay. This has 26 db of headroom in it it's got transformers in it it's a vca compressor so on and so forth so this is 100 percent analog it's just digitally controlled it is a vca compressor and we have two vca compressors one for the left one for the right because it is a stereo unit the vca compressor is kind of made famous by ssl the g-series bus compressor that's kind of what these two compressors kind of emulate lots of manufacturers do it but Wes Audio has really taken it a step further. So that's a really great thing. This unit could be run in either stereo, dual mono, or mid-side, which is really cool, very, very flexible. Um, also, we have um, the selectable um, output it can either be electronically or transformer um, controlled, and we'll talk about that in a second when we walk through the controls. It's got Carnhill transformers inside, which again, we'll talk about that, real transformers, so you can drive the transformer to get more saturation and coloration like you would on a really good high-end piece of audio analog gear, which this is. Has touch-sensitive controls. What that means, as you see on the screen here, if you look when I touch the control here on the hardware unit, you can see both sides light up. It senses my touch. So as I go through and touch the controls, you can see that both sides of the hardware actually light up. And if I turn those controls like up here, you'll see on the plugin that it controls it along with it. This is what's really cool. So whether I, whether I use the hardware to control the plugin or if I come up to the plugin on that same control, you'll see the hardware down here on your screen. You'll see that that changes as well. Okay, so the touch sensor for controls is really cool. And as I said, the biggest feature for me outside of the sound, because of course it's got to sound good and we're going to listen to that, but it's 100% recallable completely 
digitally controlled. Okay. So those are the main features. Again, you can check out all the other additional features and get real down into the weeds from a technical aspect by using the link in the description box. Sweetwater's got a really good write up on it and a couple of cool videos on it. You can check that out as well. So let's walk through the controls here. So as you can see, um, this looks just like the hardware. Wes Audio made a plugin that looks and mimics the exact, just about, it's a couple of uh, buttons that are slightly uh, different, uh, but it looks just like the hardware. So let's start and let's walk through it. Now, again, this is a stereo bus compressor. So if you look down the middle here where we have the parameter links, the bypass and the mute switches to the left side of that, you have a one set of controls and exactly the same set of controls on the right side. Okay. So they're just duplicates. So we're going to walk through one side and you'll get the, you'll get the gist of it. So we start at the top left-hand corner. We have our threshold here. And as I said, whether I turn it on the plugin or whether I grab the hardware and turn it, we have the threshold here. Okay. Underneath that, we have an attack. We have more attack um, choices here in settings than we do on a regular SSL bus compressor. We have 30 milliseconds, 10, uh, or 15, 10, 5, and then we have uh, we have uh, three, one, and then we have microseconds down here as well. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different attack settings, which is really nice. Underneath that, we have the THD. This is a fully variable total harmonic distortion, which adds color and saturation to the signal. Now, all the West Audio modules have this, and we're going to look at those in some other videos, but what makes the NG bus compressor unique is that on the other units, like the Dion compressor and the, um, and the Hyperion EQ, there's a button. There's, a, there's an off, a low THD setting, and a high THD setting. Here, it's completely sweepable. So you can go all the way from none, no coloration at all, all the way up to max, and we'll demonstrate that as well. So that's a really, really nice feature. Next to that, we have these two uh, dials here that are in red, okay? And this is the iron um, setting and it turned on and off by the button right above it. If you see that, I could turn it off. If I turn off the iron, the makeup gain becomes our typical makeup gain, and this is uh, electronically controlled. So again, you have a threshold. You uh, you know compress a couple of dB. You can use the makeup gain to um, to offset or to compensate for the volume drop due to the compression, just like any regular compressor here. When you turn on the iron feature, this goes from green to red, and this makeup button now becomes how hard you're driving that Carnhill transformer. So all the way off, you're not using, you're not driving any additional signal into the transformer itself. As you turn this up, you are um, you are driving more into the transformer. You're getting more compression, more saturation, more color. Again, we will listen to that in a few seconds. And then you use the iron pad here um, to compensate for the volume. So in other words, as you um, turn up the makeup, you're going to be driving more signal into the transformer. So therefore, you're going to get more volume. And you can use the pad. You can hear the relays, hopefully. If you can't, uh, I won't know until I do the editing on the video. But anyhow, this will. Um, this is actually, you can hear the switches. This is 12 dB, or actually 16 dB worth of pad in 1 dB increments. So as we turn up the makeup, makeup, driving the transformer as the volume increases, we can pad it down so we have a level matching um, of the output stage, okay? So this is the output stage. This is really, really cool. And again, we'll take a listen to this in a few seconds. Above this, we have our ratio. We have a one, uh, 1.5, a two, oop, two, four, 10, and infinity, okay? Just by those two buttons here. Above this, we have our meter as well. Then we have our mix knob here, right? Our mix knob is um, for parallel compression. We can keep it on 100% compressed signal or we can turn it down and we can bring back some of the dry, unprocessed signal in here as well. Then we have our uh, a release time here as well. We have um, a 0 0.5135, uh, 69, uh, 1.2, and then auto, okay? Right here. So there's our release. And then underneath that, we have our side chain, which is really cool. So we have, we could turn it off 60, 90, 150, T1 and T2. These are tilt, uh, tilt um, settings, like a tilt EQ kind of a thing. So we have two tilt um, parameters here. And then we can also do an external side chain as well, which is really cool. Again, we'll take a listen to that. In the center, now, what's different about the um, about the hardware physically versus the plugin, as you'll see here, is we have our parameter link at the top, um, which is the same between the plugin and the hardware. But then underneath that, we have three sets of buttons, which is not on the plugin. We're in stereo mode now. 
We can hit dual, stereo, or mid-side. And where it changes on the plugin when we do that is down here. So you can actually click on the plugin at the very bottom in the middle. See that? Or on the hardware, there's physical buttons here. Then we have a bypass button here where we can hit that and that will bypass the unit, which we'll do so we can turn it on and off. Um, and then we have three presets here where we can go ahead. Uh, you don't see that on the plugin, but we have three ABC where you can save presets for it as well, which is cool. Then we have our power button underneath, which you don't see on the plugin either, but there's the power button and that's it, duplicated on the right hand side. So it's really, really cool. So whether you like physically touching the hardware, or whether you like using the plugin or a combination of both, you can do that. So now let's listen to this on a few different sources. Oh, and by the way, the way I have this set up in Studio One and I will do a separate video on the routing of this so I can keep this video a little bit more short and concise. I won't talk about the inputs and the outputs in this video, but I will let you know that in Studio One, I'm using the Pipeline XT plugin as a way to um, have this uh, working here. And, um, and other DAWs have something similar. Logic has the IO plugin. Pro Tools has an insert kind of a plugin, and I'm sure other DAWs do it uh, similarly. But Pipeline makes it really nice because you can just put it on as a plugin. So as we can see here, um, I have in Pipeline set up NG bus compressor inputs and outputs send is five and six, my return is five and six, that is, those are the physical outputs and inputs on my um, audio interface, which is a Universal Audio Apollo X6, again, we'll save that for another video. This is the first plugin on the master bus, which is Pipeline, and then right after that is our West Audio um, uh, plugin, NG bus compressor plugin interface. There are no other plugins anywhere in this session. The first thing I want to do is listen to it on some software drums. So I pulled up a mini drum part of SD5, Stephen Slate's uh, SD5 here. So we just have a, a MIDI groove that I just brought in here. Let's listen to this on some drums here and we'll start tweaking it around here. So let's give a listen. Okay, so right now we're at a 30 millisecond attack. We'll go maybe that famous 10 millisecond. We'll go like a two to one ratio here. Or maybe four to one here. We got no other compression happening. Um, and then we have our attack time. Or we would set our attack, excuse me, our release time. We'll do a fast release. And then we'll use our threshold. Get some compression happening. And then we'll compensate with some makeup gain. As before, we'll level match this plugin. And now we're level match pretty good. Let's work with the total harmonic distortion. Completely off. Nice saturation. Once you tend to get above around the noon pattern, once you get above 12 o'clock here on the THD, it'll start to get a little bit crispy. So just be aware of that if you want to be a little more subtle. compression happening. So what I hear instantly, and I'll, I don't know how it'll come across on YouTube, is 
once I engage the NG bus compressor, especially with some uh, THD, with about you know 50% of the total harmonic distortion setting, you can feel the drums get a little bit more lively, a little bit more punchy, they get a little bit bigger sounding, and they get a little bit more glued together, if you will, right? And now these are VST drums, and Stephen Slate stuff sounds great already. Um, so you can think of this as kind of like, again, it's on the master bus, so after you kind of mixed and EQ'd and compressed all your individual drum elements, this is what you can do. You can put this on a drum bus, or in this case, we're using it on the stereo bus, but it really gives that nice punch and glue and really some weight on the low end. Give it a little more volume here. That's before. Okay, so now let's listen to the iron setting. The iron setting is really great. So now again, when we hit the iron setting, we bring in the transformer, our makeup gain goes from green to red. And again, that's the that's just switching the output stage on whether you want to which control it electronically, which is with the iron off and you're using the makeup gain just to, just like a traditional uh, compressor plug-in makeup gain where you turn, you know, compress and then use the makeup gain to compensate for the volume drop. When you turn on the iron and you hit the transformer, now again, the makeup is now how hard are we hitting the transformer? And then the pad will let you compensate for that volume like we did when it was in electronically controlled output stage. Make sense? So here comes the iron. Let's just let's just do a little bit of let's do a little iron here. And then let's just turn it on and off and see what happens. Now I want to level match it. See by using the pad. That's without the iron. So as I turn up the pad, it gets quieter, right? You can instantly hear the compression. Listen to the tone of the snare drum as it changes when I bring in that transformer. Nice. Now we can drive it even harder if we want. And then we use the pad to compensate for the volume, right? a lot more gluey. Now let's try and bringing in some of the side chain settings. So this right now is completely off. So all the signal is affecting the compressor, but if we want to let, let's say the low end, that kick drum, put it around maybe 60 or 90 and let that low end kind of sneak through and let's see how it kind of handles it. You can hear it. Probably a little too much. So you get a lot of combinations between the iron transformer, which 
again, you, you can not use it if you don't want to. But to me, the whole one of the huge benefits of this is using it. I'm using it kind of drastically, but to not use the iron to me would be, I'm sure there's cases where maybe you wouldn't. But to me, that's the beauty of this is by using the iron in combination with the total harmonic distortion, you could get a ton of different tonal possibilities here, ton of stuff. Um, so it's very, really widely adjustable. It's not just a couple of different se settings. I love the fact that they're both sweepable and you can really, you know, fine tune how much of it you want or don't want it in your signal. It makes a big difference. And at least on this drum MIDI track here, it just makes everything big and wide and fat. It adds a lot of weight which is really, really nice. It just sounds gorgeous. I mean, it's it's instantly noticeable, at least to my ears here in the studio. So um, let's listen to, um, now let's listen to this on a different source. So that's just on drums. So now I also did put a couple of uh, final kind of uh, mixes up here that I've done before. So these, these are mixes that have already been done. They haven't been mastered. Uh, per se, but they've been done and they've had some light mix bus compression on it and some EQ and stuff. But this is a, a stereo mix of a track here. Let's kind of listen and just see what this kind of does. We'll uh, we'll turn this down here, although we'll turn the iron off for now. And let's uh, play with some settings here and let's listen to it on a full a full mix. So here we go. Again, the thing I love about hardware, and the more videos that I do like this, I say this in every single video where we're testing hardware, and we're not comparing it to a plug-in per se. We'll do that in another video where maybe we'll compare this like an SSL style bus compressor, although this has so many more features. It's a thing that I, that I tend to really like about hardware, and what I love about this unit in particular is that when you engage it and you start tweaking in the THD and the iron settings, you can hear how things just get a little bit more sense of depth in 3D and it just gets wide and fat and a ton of low end, a ton of tightness on the low end. It's not flubby and muddy, it's tight and it's punchy, 
which I really like. Now, again, this is a final mix that's already been done, and this is kind of done after the fact, which is not really the way you would do this. You would want to mix into this during your mix session, but you can kind of get the idea. And just by playing with the side chain settings and with the, really, these two knobs here, right? These, the makeup and the, and the THD, the iron settings and the total harmonic distortion is what really sets this thing apart. Right now I'm gonna do a two to one ratio, doing about three, four dB of compression. Sounds really good. Let's try it on one more kind of a final mix here. Here's a different type of tune altogether. Here's kind of a jazz, here's a jazz tune. Um, and we'll like, we'll try that and see how that kind of sounds. It's a little bit more mellow, a little cleaner sound. Let's take the iron off for a minute. Says and gown, wanna play along tonight. Take me down, give me glamour by the pound. It be going around tonight. Down at the palace, got to be actress. Take me down, where they mingle with the crown. Can we be profound tonight? Royal clowns, talking syllables and nouns, never wrong and never right. You can hear uh, when you get a little bit more aggressive with the THD, you can hear a little bit of crispiness on those on that kick drum. Right. Down at the palace, two cents are priceless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People be tripping on their fears, they be sipping, but we got our own thing going down. Cause there's no denying that to not be sublime as long as you're around. Get the iron in here. Take me down to the river by the town, leave the crazy crowd behind. Oh, love me loud when we're nowhere to be found. Can you make me feel all right? Down at the palace, kissing me reckless. Cause I Just puts that vocal right up front. It really, it really builds up the bottom end. This is kind of a more pillowy, kind of a more resonant, uh, kind of a kick drum sound that really blooms really, really nice. Um, the, to me, again, the iron, the, the transformer is the key to this thing. Um, and I don't know why. I can't imagine it'd be too many times I wouldn't use it in a mix. Um, but that's just some of the possibilities of what you can do. It's a wonderful sounding compressor. It really, really, truly is a great sounding compressor with a lot of versatility um, and a lot of different settings, as you heard there, whether it's just on something like raw drums or whether it's on a full mix, mixing into this would, probably, would be really the right way to do it. And between the total harmonic distortion, the iron, and all the different uh, side chain uh, filters here, is, it, it, especially the tilt features sound pretty good as well. I was playing with that tilt number two and that sounded really good. And the extended amount of attack settings 
and release settings and the fact that you could run it in dual mono mid-side, which we'll do in another video. Um, this is a real winner. It sounds really, really great. And again, the fact that you can completely control this, if I were to just shut this session down and reopen another session that had the NG bus compressor on it with the settings completely different from this one, it completely 100% recalls it. And again, for me, and I've said it a thousand times, that to me is the game changer as I'm moving more hybrid is to not have a bunch of old analog gear, which is great, but having to go through the, the, um, the extra work of writing down settings and taking photos and all that stuff. And that's the way it's been done for years in analog studios. It's just part of the process and there's nothing wrong with it. People do it every day, but this is so much nicer. Um, and so I think this is a winner. This is a great, great sounding compressor. So again, if you want to learn more about it, you can click the link in the description box below. Check it out at Sweetwater. Um, I think the asking price for this thing is right under three thousand U.S. dollars as of the recording of this video. Which again, for a for a stereo bus compressor with this many features in it, is a very I think a really um uh, fair. It's probably the word price when you look at the market and look at other things on the market for stereo bus compressors, this is pretty much in that ballpark. You would have thought, or at least I would have thought that having the extra ability to have completely digital control, that somehow that would really inflate the prices for those extra features. And it really doesn't, comparatively speaking, it's in the ballpark price-wise. So it's something that you may want to you may want to check out and stay tuned to the channel because there'll be more videos where we'll be featuring the NG bus compressor as I get to use it more on some different sources and we can really, really play around with it. So I want to thank you so much for joining me for taking a look at the Wes Audio NG bus compressor. And once again, I want to thank Sweetwater for allowing me to bring this video to you today. Um, I couldn't do this without them, and I want to thank them so much. And again, all the links will be in the description box below. Now, because you stuck around to the end of the video, I want to give you a couple of free gifts. So if this is your first time here, I want you to head out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Right on the homepage, I have a free mixing course worth about 50 bucks. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And also, if you want to check out any of my other paid training courses on the website. We have everything from recording to mixing to mastering for both beginners, intermediates, and advanced level, where we look at all kinds of different mixing concepts and techniques. Check out the training courses page on my website, and I want to give you a coupon code. The coupon code is YouTube25. That will take 25% off any training course on the website. Just use it at checkout. Again, all of that information will be in the description box below. So let me know below in the comment section, what do you think of this particular compressor? Do you use hardware in your rig? Do you have a stereo bus compressor or are you using hybrid on any level? If so, what are you doing? And how do you think this stacks up against some of the stuff that maybe uh, you've listened to or have in your own rig? What do you think of this Wes Audio stuff that's completely digitally controlled in 100% analog signal class. I'd love to know what you think. Leave comments below. And until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and mixingmadeeasy.net. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.